Fantastic. Fantastic. We love that. I wonder whether that stirred Tommy Robinson. Let's have a chat with him. He joins us now. Author of Enemy of the State, the top-selling book. Hello, Tommy. Hello. How are you doing? Not too bad. Do you like that Russian music to get you in the mood? <laughs> no, when you... You know when Steve disappeared, you were shouting, Steve, Steve. Yeah. I was shouting, I'm here, John, I'm here. Because oh, these were real names, I thought you were shouting me. Oh, yeah, yeah of course, yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, here's a question for you. How come yeah. the authorities can make you stay in the country and not allow you to travel, but they can't keep an eye on somebody who's gone on telly and said, I'm a jihadi and I want to put the black flag of ISIS up in Regent Park? There's something going wrong here, isn't there, Tommy? Well, it's the biggest failure going, isn't it? It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable, isn't it? I always wonder. I wonder every day, even when I'm standing in now, because I keep thinking, if one of them kill me, yeah, yeah, my blood's on their hands. They've had so many warnings. So I always think, are they following me everywhere I go? Because they yeah. should be. But, but then I, when I see that what happened this week, I think they're not. I think that, uh, like, that's unbelievable. That that man, if you ask me to put a list together of 50 names yeah. of who the top, most at-risk Muslims are in our country, he'd have been in it. Yeah, He'd have been in it. So how, how can I do that? Yeah, How can I do that and, and give you names of who are, we think are the most concerned and they, they're not watching him? And not just not watching him, but he has the opportunity to get in a van with two other known radicals yeah. and head towards the capital, in, in the capital city. It's, it's, yeah, I just, I don't know. But then, but then at the same time, we, we have to understand how many they're watching, how big the problem is. So how huge that problem is. And I keep hearing this, you know, Theresa May cut 20,000 troops. Uh, 20,000. 23,000, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she cut 23,000 people. We have 3,000 men on 24 hour day watch, seven days a week. It takes 27 men, three groups of nine men, to yeah. monitor one man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now that's 81,000 officers we're using each year to monitor would be jihadists. Just them. Just them. So when I hear all the, all the arguments about this, I think those jihadists, that come in on Labour's watch. They bought them in. Yeah. That, they, they, I, I blame Labour for all of the problems. When I look at my hometown and I see how bad it is and the problems we've got, I have a deep, wrenched hatred for Labour for what they've done to our country. And, and, and I can't get away from that. So and, you, and you put the blame for this at the feet of Labour, do you? All of it. All of it. A whole lot. Every problem. Every problem. And I feel... And I feel well, Labour's done well in this. I think this election, Labour have done quite well reaching out to people from our background, yeah. as, in, as, in, as in youngsters and youth. And, and working class, very, yeah, yeah, yeah. They've done, they've, 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 yeah, not, I wouldn't say, I'd say in working class towns like Newcastle and cities like Liverpool and places like that that haven't got large Muslim communities, maybe the Labour Party still represents them yeah. as white working class. But you go to any Labour town where there's a large Muslim community, then that, those white, white working class feel absolutely betrayed. Betrayed, alienated, left behind. Left behind. There's a reason why white working class children are the biggest academic failures at the minute. There's a reason for that. We've been neglected and left behind sure. as a community. Okay. And, um, yeah. So why, then, here's a question for you then. So what is the party for, for those dispossessed white youth, as you describe them, those working class communities? Who are they going to be voting for, do you feel? There isn't one. The simple. There right. isn't one. Okay. There isn't a party for them. I said you have to take that this, this is the lesser of two evils in this election. That's what I'd be. That's why I done a video this morning about Jeremy Corbyn. When that man said he's been smeared, he's been smeared. He called Hamas and Hezbollah his friends. Okay, that yeah. is the equivalent of saying ISIS are our friends. They execute homosexuals. They kill people. They massacre people. Yeah, they are terrorists. That is exactly the same as saying my friends ISIS are coming to visit. It's, it's the equivalent of okay. saying that. Okay, so yeah. there, therefore, whoever wins overnight. You think there'll be no real change in terms of the Islamist threat that we're living through? Um, no, I, I have ho hope that Theresa May begins to address it. But can we really? She was Home Secretary for six years or, yeah. or how, how many years whilst all these problems are going on. Um, Jeremy Corbyn has stood against it. Has, I've watched videos of him saying since 1983 he stood against all terror legislation. He has... He has said that he said that he's happy for Muslims to go and fight with ISIS. He's happy for them to go to Syria. He's happy for them to go out there, which means they'll go out there, get bomb training like the man in Libya did. He's also then happy for them to come back. That's his words. So when all I think about when when we're talking about policies, I don't think I think of the main concern for me and the main concern for our country. That's our national security, and the biggest problem for that is Islam. Islam, and Jeremy Corbyn will bend over backwards for Islam. He will bend over backwards for them.
So that's how I see. So that's why I would do anything I could not to, get, not to see him in power tonight. What's mine? Good talking to you, Tommy. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks. Tommy Robinson, author.